Hello, and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Tonight, we'll be discussing the witchy world of Ouija boards. As expected, most of the tales are about how the board messed with people in a bad way. But the final story is one like I've never heard before, so be sure to stick around until the end, or just skip ahead. Hey, let's not pretend that you can't do just that. I always hope that you will listen to everything, but it's your choice. And I always appreciate the fact that you choose to spend every Thursday at 5 p.m. with me. So for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together, together. I've had a few experiences with ghosts and spirits, all of which happened after I used a Ouija board. The first time, a couple of friends and I were in a graveyard near our house, and it was around midnight. We played for probably half an hour trying to get a response from the board, when we finally did. I asked, what's your name? And the board clearly spelled out R I C. H. And then the planchette slid over to goodbye. We were kind of freaked out, but all of us thought that one of us had been the one moving the planchette, though we all swore individually that it wasn't us. We returned to the graveyard the next day to find that we had been sitting near a gravestone for a man named Richard. That is when things started happening in our homes. I was 17 or 18 at the time, and I was downstairs in the bathroom taking a shower around 9 p.m., and I heard someone playing the piano outside the bathroom door. The same piano key was being played over and over, probably 20 times in a row. Sometimes the piano key would be pressed longer, sometimes it was quick. It made no sense. Why do such a thing? After my shower, I went upstairs and I asked who had been playing the piano. My parents said I was alone downstairs the entire time. I shared this experience with my friends, and one of them said that he and his mother also heard his piano playing in that same way that same week. He also told me that when he was praying, his headphones jumped off the nail and off the wall where they had been hanging and fell to the floor. Another friend told us that that same week, his mom was doing sit-ups in their workout room and something pulled on her leg. None of our parents even knew that we were playing with the board at that time. One night, I was asleep on the couch, probably a month or so after the first use of the Ouija board. I woke up in the middle of the night to see a large black figure staring at me from the top of the stairs. I shut my eyes and tried to go back to sleep. In retrospect, I believe this was sleep paralysis, which I'd never had before. The very next night, I awoke again and saw the same figure standing in the doorway, staring at me. I sat up and checked the clock. It was 3.10 a.m., the witching hour. Probably a month later, we were all in my friend's basement in the middle of winter. All of the doors and windows were shut, and there was absolutely no breeze. As we were watching a movie, the bathroom door started swinging back and forth, and then it slammed shut. We all saw it happen, but for some reason, we decided to go back to the graveyard and try the Ouija board again. When we returned, at first we had no luck summoning anything. Then my friend, the one who had heard the piano also, said, Give me a sign that you're here. Immediately, his hand left the planchette and grabbed at his back. My other friend and I quickly said goodbye to the board and lifted his shirt. I swear to God, you could see four scratch marks going down his back. 
Here is photographic evidence. I don't care if you don't believe what happened. I've stopped trying to persuade people of the truth by now. All I know is that it proved to me that the afterlife is a very real thing. Two months ago, we used the board again in my friend's attic. I asked if there was anything there, and at first there was no reply. Then I asked if there was an evil spirit there, and the planchette moved to yes so quickly, and it began spelling out stuff faster than we could read it. We said goodbye, and I said I would never use the board again. Later that day, though, they tried it again, without me, but I was there. They asked who it was that we were talking to, and it started to spell out the name R I, and when it got to the C, I started trying to record it with my phone, and that is when all responses stopped coming. I've seen things at my ex's house too, but I think I've typed too long already. Be safe, everyone, and don't mess with Ouija boards. They work. A few years back, my best friend and I wanted to try playing with the Ouija board, so I made one up and decided we would try it in a graveyard at night. This graveyard is massive, and it's locked up pretty tight at night. But we had climbed the fence quite a few times in the past and knew how to get in. It's very overgrown, and it resembles a woodland with dirt paths that run right into the center to an old abandoned chapel. It was in front of this building where we decided to try the Ouija board. We sat down facing one another with the homemade board between us and put our fingers on the planchette and began to ask questions. I asked if there were any spirits out there that cared to speak with us. We didn't have to wait long before the planchette started moving very slowly over to the word yes. We looked at each other and I was kind of shocked that it was working, yet I had a tiny bit of doubt in my mind that it was my friend who was actually moving it. But we carried on. Next, I asked its name. Again, the planchette started moving very slowly, and it landed on the letter B, and then stopped. It didn't seem as if it was going to move anywhere else, so I said, Is your name B? Again, slowly, it moved over to yes. So I asked another question. Are you a male or a female? The planchette moved and stopped on the letter F and just sat there. Now I was really starting to think that it was my friend just messing with me, seeing as that it was moving so slowly and not actually spelling out words, just stopping at one letter and staying put. But I've known this friend for my whole life, and I trusted him, even though I was still having small doubts. So I asked another question. Are you happy? Then, for the first time, the planchette moved really fast and stopped dead center on the word, no. At that point, I had a very strange feeling come over me. It was like a really sharp, cold feeling, and the night seemed to get darker and quiet, as if the wind completely stopped moving and a strange calmness took its place. I looked at my friend, and he seemed to be feeling the same thing that I was feeling. But for some reason, I didn't want to stop. So I asked, Is there anything we can do to help you? The planchette moved fast again, this time to the word yes. Now I was starting to feel real fear, because I realized it wasn't my friend moving this thing. He looked afraid too. He's a pretty tough guy, and I'd never seen him scared in the 15 years that I'd known him. But in that moment, he was as scared as me. I asked my final question. 
what can we do to help you? This is when the planchette started moving very fast and very accurately, and it spelled out the words, Get Out. We looked at each other, and I said, Okay, goodbye. The planchette moved very fast over to the word goodbye. At this point, we were pretty freaked out, and we stood up and literally ran through the wooded pathways until we got to the main gate and climbed the fence to get out. As soon as we were outside the boundaries of the graveyard and back on the street, everything felt normal again. We caught our breath and walked down the road, both of us pretty shaken about what had just happened. Was it real, or was it simply one of us subconsciously moving the planchette? I believe we actually spoke to a spirit that night. I've never done it again, but I think of that night often, and I would love to hear what you guys think about it. I've never dabbled in anything supernatural besides the tarot cards. But my aunt did. She was always known for being carefree and reckless as a youth. When she was about 15, she was left home alone and decided that she wanted to try a Ouija board. She was curious to see if they really worked. She had to wait to be alone because my grandfather didn't allow my aunt to dabble in any spiritual practices that could go dark, with good reason. However, when they left her home alone, she decided to try it anyway. They didn't have a Ouija board, since my grandfather would never allow it. So instead, she crafted one out of wood and a sharpie. Now, I know what you must be thinking, that there's no way that would work. But there have been many cases where it has. If you provide a spirit or a demon with any medium by which to contact you, it doesn't matter what it is or how it's made. They'll use it as a means of communication. By touching the makeshift wooden planchette with the intent to summon something, my aunt granted an entity access to communicate with her and potentially attach itself to her. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. The Ouija board ended up working, much to my aunt's initial delight. She got in contact with the spirit of an old woman. The woman told her that she could predict the future. So, of course, my aunt asked her questions such as, What will I study at university? Where will I live in the future? And how will I die? Now, even though my aunt was skeptical of this spirit's ability, she knew that she shouldn't ask the date of her death. Even if the spirit wasn't accurate, any date that it said would still be in my aunt's mind, and she would most likely be plagued by it her whole life. So she simply asked how she would die, and not when. Not much of a distinction, I'll grant you, but she was only 15. Anyway, the board answered that she'd study English live in Canada, and die, quote, the same as your mother will, of breast cancer, unquote. Well, my aunt thought those answers were absolutely ludicrous, since she had always wanted to study the sciences at university, was from India, and intended to stay there, and at the time, my grandma hadn't gotten her cancer yet. So my aunt being the ballsy and stupid kid that she was, taunted the entity about its seemingly incorrect predictions and asked the entity to prove itself. So it told her that my grandfather would be home that day one hour earlier than planned and catch her playing with the Ouija board. My aunt didn't believe that either, of course, so she continued to taunt it. This in turn angered the spirit resulting in it becoming very hostile towards her. Suddenly, my aunt saw cuts forming on her arms, and they continued to travel upwards. She screamed and threw the planchette across the room, 
right as my grandfather walked through the door, an hour early, catching her in the act. To say that he was fuming mad apparently is an understatement. My grandfather, being very spiritual, closed the board session properly by saying goodbye and immediately had a priest come and bless the house. Afterwards, my aunt, of course, was in a lot of trouble, but she tried to show my grandfather the cuts that she received on her arms, only to find that they had all disappeared. The pain was still there, but without any physical scarring as evidence, no one believed her. At that point, my aunt was petrified. The worst part, though, is that the predictions have started to come true. She did end up going to university to study English, and after getting her bachelor's degree, the entire family immigrated to Canada as my grandfather's visa got approved. Finally, my grandma has gotten breast cancer twice, and while she hasn't passed away yet, her time is quickly approaching. My aunt is terrified and tells us all this story to ensure that we never dabble in any kind of dark spiritual objects. I myself am quite the skeptic of all things spiritual and demonic in nature. I lean towards atheism, but I wonder if there's truth in it, because I can't deny that my aunt is afraid at the mere mention of a Ouija board, and she's not the type to be frightened easily by anything so it does make me question whether this is real. Have any of you had a similar experience with an entity that could predict the future and cause cuts to form that quickly vanished? Can you help me understand any of this anymore to maybe lower my skepticism? Please let me know. The following anecdotes were taken from the comments section of another Reddit user's post. I was originally planning to use them to supplement the material to bolster the original story, as I have done many times in the past. However, the original poster declined to give me permission to narrate the story. Now that's perfectly fine, he's well within his rights, but I still felt that these comments were worth sharing with all of you and the commenters did give me permission. So, I'll simply give you a three-word summary of the original story, then read the comments. Are you ready? Here we go. Ouija boards. Bad. Now, on to the comments. A friend of mine, a dude who is a complete skeptic about this type of thing, once played around for fun with the Ouija board with some of his friends, fully expecting nothing to happen. Then the planchette started moving wildly. He asked, what's your name? And the planchette spelled out the word D-E-V-I-L. They all noped it out of that place quickly, and he said he will never even get close to one of those things ever again. My grandmother and her cousins used to play with the Ouija board when they were teens over at her cousin's house. Drinking and partying was involved. Stupid teen stuff. After trying to evoke spirits with the board, the house began to exhibit signs of haunting that slowly ramped up to the point that everyone was pretty upset the Ouija board started just randomly showing up at different places in the home, and everyone swore they hadn't moved it. It seriously creeped out the oldest cousin, so he burned it until it was just a charred piece of wood, then he buried the remains in the backyard. The cousins all went to sleep that night thinking that was that. The next morning, the Ouija board unburned and with not a speck of dirt on it, was sitting on their kitchen table waiting for them. They ended up taking holy water from their church, dousing the Ouija board in it, and sending it off with the garbage men. It didn't come back after that. 
A few weeks ago, I had my very first experience with one. I was at a friend's house and we were trying to figure out what we could do as it got dark. She mentioned a Ouija board that her stepdad had that was under the coffee table. I looked down and there it was. I was raised to never mess with them, and I've had quite a few supernatural things happen to me in life, so I do know that there are spirits out there that we can't see, both good and evil. Anyway, she was saying that she had tried it before and that nothing happened, and she thinks it's fake. I was sort of kneeling next to the coffee table, and I put my hand on the table to help me stand up, and just as I did that, I said, I would never mess with one of those. Ouija boards are real. And right when I said the name Ouija board and had my hand on the table above where it was stored, all of the lights in the house went out and it was pitch black for a few seconds. Then the lights came on, but they flickered for a good 10 seconds more. It's not a story that's as dramatic as some of the rest of them on here, but it scared me pretty badly. I've used a Ouija board before, and I can say with 100% confidence that they are real. Once my friend was worried that she was being haunted by a demon, so she and I consulted a Ouija board. Well, not only did it confirm that she was being haunted by a demon, but it said that the demon really wanted to see both of us suffer. When I asked if it would haunt us, it said, I'll try. And then when we tried to say goodbye to close the session, it yanked the planchette away from us and off of the board. I'll never forget the strength of that pull. It was so real, and it came from the side that neither my friend nor I were touching. After that experience, I couldn't sleep for days. We were brought up to never use a Ouija board, as it was related to witchcraft and demons. My aunt was also told to stay away, but she decided to use it with friends anyway. I can't remember all the details, but somehow they called forth something that was so strong, it made the board levitate. And it made one of the girls levitate off the floor, too. They all got spooked and told it to leave, but when they did that, the glass in the patio door broke out. That story was enough to keep me from ever wanting to play with one growing up. When I was a kid and all through high school, anytime someone brought out a Ouija board, I'd flatly refuse to participate. I actively avoided them even though my friends thought I was being overly dramatic. I'm not really religious, and I do understand the scientific method. Still, I think some things can't adequately be explained by science, reason, or religion. My fear of Ouija boards is innate. A sixth sense, or over-the-horizon radar, that I discovered as a child and still use as an adult. It's an overwhelming but fleeting sense of foreboding and sorrow. Sometimes, though rarely, that feeling is also accompanied by an olfactory element, such as the smell of perfume or flowers. All I know is that my gut tells me to avoid Ouija boards at all costs. This story happened in the Philippines in October of 2004, back when I was still a junior in high school. My friends and I stuck around school late one night after our annual Halloween party. We had agreed to try out my friend's Ouija board. It wasn't the brightest idea, but we were looking for a thrill. We found a nice spot under a tree and proceeded to set up the game. There were five of us, two boys and three girls, and we were all expecting some kind of paranormal contact. Rumor had it that our school was haunted, but we'd never really experienced anything firsthand. 
But it was Halloween when the spirits come out to play, and we wanted to get spooked. Also, we'd never seen a Ouija board firsthand before, so we were all pretty excited. Our school was located in an old converted Spanish colonial house built in the 1800s when the Spaniards still occupied the Philippines. We were in a section of the school that didn't get used very often. It was located next to a creepy old Jesuit house. People only went there if they needed to use the bathroom, store equipment in one of the sheds, or make out with their boyfriend or girlfriend without being seen. We sat down in the middle of an open space with only an exposed bare light bulb illuminating the surroundings. We were all having a laugh, scaring each other with our what-if scenarios. It was your typical dumb kids doing your typical dumb things. My friend, who had brought the Ouija board, proceeded to place it in the middle of our circle. If I remember correctly, it was a glow-in-the-dark version, which we found hilarious. But it gave us the ability to see what was written in the dark. Not knowing exactly what to do, and going only by what we saw in the movies, we all placed our index fingers on top of the planchette, and we looked at each other and said, Well, what's next? None of us knew if there was a proper way to start the ritual. Plus, the board hadn't come with any instructions, so we decided to just throw out questions. Is anyone there? I called from the darkness. Nothing. If there are spirits living here, please talk to us, one of the other girls joined in. Still, nothing. We clearly had no idea what we were doing. One of the boys jerked the planchette, and the girls screamed, breaking the silence. Then we all laughed at how ridiculous this all was. After a bit of joking around, we decided to give it another go. We all placed our index fingers back on the planchette, and once more we asked, Is anyone there? We'd like to make contact. Don't break the circle, one of my friends said jokingly. Shut up, I whispered. We were just about to give up when the wind started to pick up. The stillness broke, and the darkness around us seemed to move. Just a coincidence, I thought. Is anyone there? I was excited. It was like a scene from a movie with dead leaves swirling around us in the wind. Guys, I'm scared, one of the girls said. My mom warned me not to play with forces we don't understand. Despite her fear, we began calling out questions. Did you die here? Were you killed during the war? Are you the headless priest that roams these halls? Are you a hottie? We all giggled. We were just throwing out random, stupid questions. But still, nothing. No reply. This is boring. I don't want to do it anymore, one of the girls said, exasperated. We were all thinking the same thing. Just then, a group of dogs from the neighboring house started barking at us through the chain link fence. These six dogs were growling and baring their teeth, going crazy. We were all so startled and weirded out that without finishing the ritual properly by saying goodbye to the board, we just bolted out of there. We didn't see one another until after the Halloween break, and this is where the story gets really creepy. One of the girls told us about a weird experience she had the night that we played with the Ouija board. She had gotten home late when she realized that she had forgotten her keys in the house, so she called her younger brother to let her in, and what he said creeped her out. He swore she was already home. He claimed to have seen her walk in a while before and said that she looked really tired and saw her go upstairs to her bedroom. Hmm, weird, but no need to freak out, was all we thought. Besides, her brother might have just been seeing things. But then, another friend told us of an encounter that she had that same Halloween night. She was going up to her room 
when the lights started flickering as she was ascending the staircase. She assumed it was just faulty wiring. But then, she saw the door to her room open, and a dark figure stepped out and stood at the top of the staircase. She couldn't make out this entity's face, but she said that she couldn't move and felt utter dread as this figure stared down at her. Something happened to me as well, said one of the boys. He recalled that he was sleeping that night when he woke up feeling really uncomfortable. He described his vision as having TV-like static and there was this feeling of heaviness surrounding him. He looked around the room and that's when he saw a bloody, charred face with piercing red eyes grinning at him through the window. I couldn't believe what I was hearing because I also had an incident myself that night. After playing with the Ouija board that night, I was sleeping in the passenger seat of the car on the ride home when I felt the car jerk. I woke up instantly and looked out the window. I saw that we'd been hit by a huge oil tanker. I panicked and leapt out of the car. Luckily, my mom and I survived the crash, but the front of the car was a total wreck. I still don't have an explanation for why all of those things happened to us in the same night. But thank God, nothing happened after that. I've never played or gotten near a Ouija board ever since. When I was in my early 20s in 2009, I had a mysterious illness that caused me to nearly take my own life. I lost all of my friends, and I went all across the nation to different specialists seeking answers, but no one could help. No one even knew what was wrong with me. It was the first time in my life that I cried out to a God that I didn't even believe in, just in case he was real. He heard my cry, and he delivered me, but it wasn't immediate. In fact, my illness continued for nearly a decade afterwards. Ten years later, in 2017, God revealed himself to me through a supernatural experience. It was then that I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't until I repented, began reading the Bible, applying it to my life, and became obedient to what it said, that the real healing process started. Within a few months, my health issues that had plagued me for a decade were completely and miraculously healed. As for the supernatural experience, one day, my girlfriend and I were playing with a spirit board called the Psychic Circle. We had gotten into contact with a spirit that was telling us things about our family and we had to call the family members to verify that what it was saying was actually true. We were shocked yet stoked that it was actually working for us. All we wanted to ask about were selfish things like, what are the winning lottery numbers, or can you tell me my future? Yet, the spirit was only interested in talking to us about things like going to church and wanted to know when we would be getting married even though we had never planned on it. We asked it why it was saying these things to us, and it spelled out God's plan. We asked how it was able to communicate with us through a Ouija board, and it said, through prayer. It said the only reason it was able to communicate through a Ouija board, a venue not normally thought of as godly, was because we had so many people praying for us for a while now, hoping to get Jesus back into our lives. I asked if it knew what was wrong with my health, and it spelled out, Church, Soon, Healthy. I asked if I should go to church right away, or if I should wait until later, and it said that we shouldn't hold back, because time was running out. On a work trip to Dallas, my girlfriend and I opened the board one last time in our hotel room. The spirit told us to turn on the TV, and when we turned it on, 
It was set to a Christian station. The preacher was giving a sermon on the importance of repentance and giving your life to Christ. We listened to the entire sermon, and at the end of it, they said the sinner's prayer. We gave our hearts to Christ in that moment. Afterwards, we opened the nightstand, and there was a Bible in it. Inside were pamphlets on the importance of repentance. The Bible itself was underlined with various passages highlighting the same subject of repentance. We were so excited that we asked God to give us one more sign, and when we opened the curtains, there was an actual sign. It was the Candlewood Suite logo with two rings interlocked that we took as a symbol of marriage and a shining flame in the middle that we took to mean that God would hold the marriage together. Again, we opened to a random page in the Bible and pointed to a random paragraph, and it was all about the importance of marriage. When we got home, I burned the Ouija board, and not long after, I proposed. I'm pretty sure that if we continued using the board after that, it would have been wrong, because we got the messages that we were meant to get, and it served its purpose, so it was time to move on. Ouija boards aren't known for helping you out, but God will use evil for his good purposes. God has been a constant presence in my life ever since. So tell me, is taking a Ouija board to a cemetery in the middle of the night a thing? Why would you do that to yourself? That last story was rather surprising, though, as I'd never heard any good come from using a Ouija board. But there's a first time for everything. I'd like to thank you all so much for listening tonight and for your continued support. It's such fun interacting with all of you in the comments section. If you haven't yet and would like to join the official Family of Darkness for the low, low price of exactly nothing, that's right, it's completely free to join. My favorite price, by the way. Just hit that subscription button and click the notification bell, so you'll never miss the party. But as always, gate crashers are welcome. I'll just keep checking on you from time to time during the party to see if you need a refill or point you towards the bathrooms. Maybe one day you'll stop being shy and decide to join the party completely. But until then, stay scared, my friends.